Lemon Amiga presents. A Playtime Video Review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. In this week's episode, we'll be taking a look at Volfied, developed and produced by Oxford Digital Enterprises and released by Empire Entertainment Software in 1991. From this arcade-like title screen, we can change a number of options, including the game difficulty and up to two alternate players. And let's just leave the credit sequence on, because that really doesn't spoil this game. But unfortunately, there is no music on the title screen. Let's press fire, check this game out. Volfide, we control the Monostros spaceship, and with that we can lay lines across that screen. If those lines encircle something, then that's it caught in the background. And all you have to do is to trap that main boss you can see in the centre of that screen, in at least 8% of the background. And at the very bottom of that screen you can clearly see the percentage that we have cleared. You can see once it gets to 79% it's very easy to just create a few blocks and complete the level without even tackling the boss. That's the easy way to complete the game and you can march from level to level simply doing that and avoiding the boss completely. Unfortunately you won't get much score for doing that but you will gain extra ships at score checkpoints. Let's try again a few times at that level 1 and these are actually practice sessions that I took during the Lemon Amiga competition when this came up unfortunately I did not manage to record my very best plays so these are the practice runs you can see if we encircle a few of these blocks they will give us bonus items then you will usually find, in fact generally always find, a number of blocks on that screen if it's a P then all you will gain is some bonus points and if it's, well, bonus points sometimes disappear, but if it's a T, then that's a time stop. That means that we can get busy on the bus and lay traps, because the art of this game normally is to lay a trap. So now that we have most of that screen cleared, what we have to do is to try to get the boss in as small a space as possible, and then trap him right at the last moment. But it's very difficult with 78% completed to create very small gaps. So let's make room for it. And that's 93.4%, which should hopefully give us some more bonus. You can see this is very arcade like, just like most title arcade original games, such as Rainbow Islands and Bubble Bobble. This game was actually the sequel to Taito's Quicks, which appeared in the arcades in 1981 and Volfide appeared in the arcades in 1989, designed apparently by Fukio Mitsuji. The aim of every level is to simply draw tiles across that screen by holding down the fire button and pulling in the desired direction. That will move us out into open space, and in open space these enemies will kill us on contact, and any of that firepower will kill us as well. So let's just take the easy way and grab 95% of that level. Again, we don't really have to tackle that boss, all we have to do is encircle that thing and avoid all the other enemies which are on that screen. And there are always some enemies on that screen at the moment they are not intelligent on the first level so let's tackle that again and it's always random what you'll find in these things the C actually clears the screen of enemies which makes the whole job a lot easier and you can see the laser there usually we can shoot the enemies with the laser and the S is speed up so let's speed up that footage and build a trap for that boss and these 
bosses are quite ignorant, but you can, as we shall see at the end of this review, lead them by the hand and direct them into our traps. But if you can't do that, well, you're going to have to make hay while that sun shines, and while those enemies' bullets aren't touching us, then we have free reign on that level, and we can create whatever we like. This gives us lots of time to pick up any bonuses, and you saw I picked up the T, which froze the time again, and you can see if that boss cannot escape that one pixel exit that we've managed to create, then that's the boss secure. And you'll also notice that the boss reduces in size the longer that thing is on the screen, and the more walls it has to bounce off. So at this point you can trap it in a corner, you can create a very thin corridor to trap it down, which we will be seeing at the end, or you can simply wait for that boss and bide your time and find the best moment. But you can see our shield is depleting very rapidly, and if I pause the action and get this back to real time, you can see we have no shield remaining, and when we have no shield remaining, we'll die. And unfortunately, any contact with anything with no shield remaining means a life over. So now that we've lost that life, we can actually go for broke, close down that exit, and that gives us 99.5, which gives us a decent score, and decent scores are only gained by taking on that boss. And so for the final time, let's see if we can improve on that. There are many different ways to complete each level, and you can even see a flashing block in the very centre of that screen. Let's just speed that up again, and see what we find. Well, we found the clear, which saved us using that laser, but we will see some laser action later on. And so, yet again, all we have to do, wherever that boss is, we can block him in slowly. But if you touch that boss or its firepower, unfortunately you will die, and so you'll have to time those foyers into open space, otherwise the boss will kill you and they will aim on target. With such a box this size, it's not particularly hard now to trap the boss in its smallest form, but you can see I'm biding my time waiting for that, and if we construct things in open space, that shield will momentarily pause, and that means we can bide our time even longer. But which of these corners would I like to trap the boss in? And do I venture out to try and get that course even smaller? Well, I could do that just by doing this, but that gives us 99.8. And unfortunately, that is not the top score. 99.9 .9 I could have had if I went up and moved across instead of straight up. But that's how you complete the first level, and you get two ships as well, one for crossing the first checkpoint, and one for completing that first level. And normally that would put us on to more ships, but this is actually a mishmash of different attempts at these levels that I've actually edited together. So you can't compare the score or the ships either, but let's move on to level two. And on level two, what I like to do is to build myself a small skyscraper, and you will notice those bonus blocks stay on the screen for a limited time, and they disappear, unfortunately they will not count for anything. So let's yet again complete that level the easy way, and sometimes you can get through levels in seconds, certainly under a minute in this game. And if that is your playing style, then you can probably get through the first ten levels by now. But if you go the hard way, then this game will take forever, and as we will be seeing at the end of this review, you can make these levels go on forever if you like to do that. So it is entirely possible to bide your time and complete these at your own leisure. But for now, we've found the laser, and the enemies again on this stage two are very easy and very dumb, and they will simply bounce around the screen like an Amiga ball. And so all you have to do is to get over to where they are and fire in a direct line towards those. But if you get stuck behind a block or some area that you can't move, unfortunately you are at the mercy of those enemies. And so let's just collect a speed up and a freeze time icon, which means we can get rid of the last of the enemies and start to tackle that boss. Again, if I can trap him on the very top of that screen, that's great. And the boss will reduce in size all the way down to a very small thing indeed, which means we can trap him in the corner and get 99.9%. .9%. And even that's 93%, which still gives us some score, but you have to really get over 99% to get the best scores or any kind of score on this level. And every level is pretty much identical. What you'll have is bosses 
and various aliens, which sometimes will attack us, but most of the time at this stage just drawn around. And you can even shoot and fire at the boss, but that will take a lot of firepower to blow up. And we shall hopefully be seeing something along those lines later on. But I don't actually go for it. the third tactic. You can see a flashing red cube in the very centre. If you collect that icon, that will make another cube appear. And if you collect the second red flashing cube, that will give you a special weapon. You can then fire that special weapon at the boss, and only two or three shots will knock that thing out. And then, once you've destroyed the boss, you'll gain a small token score, and you'll not gain the massive score for completing a percentage of the level. So I don't tend to go for the red flashing cubes, as you will probably see on these playthroughs, and therefore they are the last thing that I pick up. But when the boss is very tiny like this, it can bounce around the screen like a pinball, and sometimes it's very hard, if you don't know what you're doing, to lure that thing. And even the gap in the center is too big, and our captive will break out of that if you weren't careful enough. So it's a choice between getting rid of that boss and gaining some small score and moving on to the next level, or making that level more worth it. And so you can see, well, if I run out now, of course, I'll only get 96, because I didn't actually make that area too small. But 96, if you are trying to rush through these levels and trying to get through levels and lives, which is one tactic, then that's all you need to do. Let's move on to the third level, and here, yet again, we see a brand new colour scheme, brand new enemies, and a brand new boss. In this case, the boss fires in all directions, all at once, but his patterns can be memorised, and if we touch any of those things flying around the boss, whilst we are on time stop, we'll get blown up, so we can't touch any of his missiles, but you can see we'll get a time score for every one of those enemies that we blow up in the background, and that will add to our score, and we will get 64,000 for the very last enemy if we trap all those in there. But that's yet again another great way to earn score, but not as great as trapping the very smallest boss in the very smallest hole. In this level, all we get is four bonuses in the corners, and don't make the mistake of rushing out too quickly, because if those have disappeared, then you've wasted your time. If the boss manages to hit us with that firepower, then that will travel down the line that we are currently making, and if the enemies touch those, as you saw, that will eat away at the line, and that will send an electric shock all the way down to where we are. So we can't be out on the limb for any amount of time, because just like that, either the boss or the enemies can touch that line, and we are dead. So lives in this game aren't very frequent, and you really have to be a master to gain those extra lives in the first place. So if you are a disaster at this game, you'll have very few lives, and that tends to put the casual player off from getting any further. But hardened players will be rewarded, and we get the maximum bonus for the clear symbol that we managed to find in one of those blocks. And we also have started to create a number of traps. In this game, divide and rule is the rule of thumb, and if you can divide that screen off in between bursts of fire, then you can subdivide that to make that smaller, and hopefully bring the boss home into our trap. All we have to do is to close the door on whatever trap size that we build, and yet again, if the smallest trap is built, then that small trap will decrease the enemy's size even more quickly, and so that will aid us no end. If we go off the side, you can see the one pixel gap that I managed to create there. But unfortunately for me, then the boss is pretty large and pretty difficult to trap the large boss inside 99%. So it is possible, of course, but these levels are getting increasingly harder as we travel throughout this game. And well, let's just move on to the next level and check that out. Backgrounds will change from level to level, but the sound effects remain mostly the same. You can hear in the background something which sounds like a burglar alarm is actually our shield energy ticking down, and you can also hear when we build a line, and of course when the enemy launches some firepower. 
In this case, this beetle boss, whatever it may be, is firing a spread, and that will fire up and down together. So you'll not only have to time that, but get out of the way as well. If in doubt, go for the collectibles, and if you find a C or a laser in amongst all that lot, it's great, because these incessant enemies buzzing our area really do make life hard work. You can even go out into open space and shoot those in open space, and you can even shoot those in frozen time. But let's go around that boss, even though, well, unfortunately, if you run out of time, out on a limb, you'll die. And that's another way to die in this game but that's exactly like the arcade machine. In fact, this is virtually arcade perfect, or as arcade perfect as they could get it. Otherwise, if we leave blocks on that screen, sometimes the bosses will get trapped among those, and I've certainly noticed getting easy kills is easier when the blocks are there to trap the boss in. But you can see I'm not sure which way the boss is going to go, and I want to create top traps rather than block the boss at the bottom. So it's a split decision and the atmosphere in this game with all this action going on and a shield ticking down is palpable because you really have to stay on the move and start thinking many steps ahead. Maybe I've put all my eggs in this one basket and the boss is certainly not moving up there and I could split that right now and end the level without moving for his life. And that's precisely what I'm going to do. So sometimes it really is a split decision and lives mean everything in this game. But yes again, if we don't claim that 99% or more, then the score is pretty dire. And that means you won't get too much score for the high score table. If you can gain 500,000 per level maximum score, then it's possible by level 3 to get 1.5 million. And we're only on 122,000 at the moment, simply because of those mechanics. So if you're going for score, then the best thing to do is always try to get that boss as small points as possible. And sometimes these bosses can be forced into a preset pattern, which gets them where you want them to go. Unfortunately, it's also easy to blow up and block off our own traps. And just like that, I had to construct a second trap to keep that thing in there. And now that that thing is in there, well, it's best to construct tube-like structures or sometimes jigsaw-like structures. And yet again, I'm dying like flies here trying to do that, trying to avoid its firepower. And you can see even the small boss can fire much firepower. And I've blown my chances of 99% because those gaps, yet again, even at that size, are far too big. And the enemy can simply squeeze through those and run away. So I'm going for the 99.4 in this case. That's probably as good as I was going to get, considering the shield power was almost empty. And so you have to keep your eyes on everything in this screen. The shield power, the bosses, the enemies and the collectibles. And you have to concentrate on building those traps as well. Let's move on to that next level, and I noticed that this is a ladybird beetle, and the ladybird will get trapped in this bottom corner if you simply start to build up there, and it's very difficult to get that cluster of upgrades in the center, but I have done that. But you may notice on this particular level, the enemies are beginning to get intelligent. The boss will still meander around that screen, but as soon as we venture out into the blue, Unfortunately, all those yellow ladybirds will be attracted to that and they will swarm to our direction. And so if we are in open space for any amount of time, we will get swarmed and that means we'll have to time these measures. And so although I know that the ladybird will get trapped in this bottom corner, running out trying to avoid all these enemies and the firepower as well isn't easy and the ladybird will fire in our direction. It doesn't fire up and down, it fires directly on target sometimes. So what I'm attempting to do is to move to the other side of that screen and to lure all those small enemies across there. And you guessed it, as soon as I did that, then the boss moves directly to where I wanted that boss, directly in that bottom corner, and we could have had that 99%. So, well, I'm just going to speed this footage up again because I didn't quite get that. 
and the boss will always go to that bottom right corner if you decide to build and follow that plan directly but unfortunately I missed that opportunity so if you do that then sometimes the corners are great to trap the boss into and you can see I'm wasting my time here because the boss is being blocked by all these bonus blocks which haven't been removed and I'm wasting my time simply trying to avoid these enemies and trying to chop that screen in half using the 50-50 formula and finally the boss is down there but we lost a life so little enemies and big enemies on the screen make life a handful and you can't always rely on your own skills and your own judgement to time these things perfectly and to get just what you wanted and in time but now let's risk everything and block that thing in there we can get most of the enemies which gives us some score and again it's a great feeling when we manage to blow everything up it's a great sound effect and that goes on for some time rather like hybris it's a loud noise and that means it's a great feeling when we complete that level let's move on to level six and check that out and in the arcades all we had to do was divide the screen in half on the amiga version you have to actually divide that boss and get the screen down to 80 percent again and if you manage to divide that boss in half using the middle of the screen so there is a boss half on the top and the bottom then you can gain extra points by doing that this is called the separation round and all you have to do is either clear that screen or separate the parts of that boss but as you can see avoiding all these enemies is difficult and the first thing to do is to get all those bonuses but yet again you're going to have to time those maneuvers and make very small jumps out there otherwise very very risky maneuvers will obviously end up with death this game was coded by richard t horrocks who started out helping to create yes prime minister with the 8-bit machines including the c64 in 1987. He moved on to the Amiga with Hunt for Red October, the book, not the movie, based on Tom Clancy's novel of course in 1987 and he then created Better Dead Than Alien which is a great Space Invaders Galaga clone in 1988 and then he moved on to the 3D realm creating the 3D Sleeping God's Light in 1989 which was a very mysterious game and after The Amazing Spider-Man in 1990, he returned to 3D with Team Yankee in 1990 and the sequel Pacific Islands in 1992. His other credits include Space Ace for the SNES in 1993, Endgame for the PS2 released in 2002, and lastly he was heard of creating and designing Mario Pinball Land in 2004. He co-coded this game with Adrian Barrett, and Adrian Barrett also created Cyberspace, which was unreleased on the Amiga. And both of them got together to create Fuse Games Limited in 2002. And they created many games under the Fuse Games label. And finally, the music was created by David Yap. You can see on later levels, the homing missile enemies really make life a pain and even though this boss is quite tiny, a tiny little frog, it is relatively difficult to get any of these bonus blocks or the frog. So I have been many screens further than this but unfortunately not on this practice run and even though I know the frog will get stuck in this bottom corner, trying to get it down there is a real pain and unfortunately I won't have much luck with that. So whilst we continue, let's move on to the scores. The lowest score came from Amiga Computing, who gave this game 60%. Amiga Action gave Volfide 70%. C Amiga gave it 70%. Amiga Format gave this game 72. And the current Lemon Amiga score is 75%. The highest score went to Amiga Power, who gave this game 80% and they said it was arcade perfect in December 1991 and so that gives this game the average score of 7 out of 10 and I think this game certainly deserves more than that because it's very addictive it's annoyingly simple and yet annoyingly hard as well and so before we end this review let's see if we can get that 99.9% .9 and so you can see 
all I had to do was lure that guy into that trap by extending myself near the entrance to that and extending your body somewhere near that boss is risky at the best of times but again if we can block that thing off there then he will be unable to retreat and he will go eventually into that very small area where we can block him off and it's a risky maneuver but finally we can block him off and we can actually save our shield power by extending into open space you can see that shield is absolutely not moving and that means that we can lure him in directly because he will always home in on our position so we can use this time hopefully if we don't get blown up to block him in and that was a wasted opportunity so i can hang around in open space and keep these levels going forever but i'd rather hang out there and try to lure that boss in just like this and quickly block him off with a one pixel gap and now i can spend all my time and all my leisure blocking him in by far the easiest way is to extend that one millimeter gap as far as possible and then all we need to do is make this room a lot smaller and make this corridor very much smaller so that we can take our time and simply wait for that boss to go to the perfect place so we can zap him and get the best score. Hope you can check this game out and thanks once again for viewing another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. See you in the next episode sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you.